he was referring them back to Habakkuk. The just shall live by faith, not by obedience to the law of Moses. And they were told Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 38, Hebrews 10, verse 38, now the just shall live by faith. Still the same. From that time until this time is by faith, by faith, Abel, by faith, Enoch, by faith, Noah, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Sarah, by faith, Isaac, by faith, Jacob, by faith, Joseph, by faith, the parents of Moses, by faith, Moses, what shall I more say? All these people by faith. And if we understand the word of God, we'll understand that justification, righteousness, proper living, acceptance in the sight of God is by faith. Now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, to the law of Moses, if any man draw back to Judaism, if anybody, if anyone draws back to the old traditional life, if anybody, if anyone draws back to self-righteousness, I can live by myself without the grace of God. If anyone draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him verse 39 in verse 39 but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition those who draw back to the law of moses to circumcision to self-righteousness and to working out their own salvation by themselves all those who draw back they draw back unto perdition but we of them that believe to the saving of the soul look at number three number three the joy and righteousness of commitment to the lord the pharisees were committed to the law they were not saved the scribes and the self-righteous religious people, they are committed to the law. They were not saved. But commitment unto the law, the joy and the righteousness of commitment to the Lord. We're looking at Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law be made a curse for us for it is written cause edge is everyone that hangeth on a tree look at romans chapter 14 we're reading from verse 17 now that we are saved what's our joy now we're born again we've lived on christ and Christ has taken our sins away. And Christ has taken all the condemnation, all the punishment. He has taken everything away. And we're now in the kingdom of God. Look at Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The children of Israel, the Jews, had the drink offering and the meat offering. But the kingdom of God is not of the drink offering and the meat offering of ceremonial law of Moses, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. We've come into the kingdom with the joy of salvation and being justified by faith. We have peace with God and then... Christ, who knew no sin, was made a sin offering for us, 
that we might be the righteousness of God in him. And so we have joy, we have peace, we have righteousness for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. When you are born again, God enters your name into the register of heaven, and you have the joy of your name written in heaven. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We were at enmity against God. He was for righteousness and holiness. We were by nature, by character, by habit, by practice, we were sinners. And the Holy One will not be in agreement with the sinful man. God was righteous and holy and perfect through and through. In his mind, in his spirit, in his heart, in his action, in his words, in his character, holy through and through. Man, on the other hand, sinful, depraved, wicked, on the inside, outside, in action, in act, in utterance, in habit, in character. So, because of the diverse natures of God and the sinner, there was no peace between God and man. But now, Christ, the mediator, Christ, the Messiah, he came, laid hands on us, and took the hand of God and reconciled us. And because of him, we're forgiven, we're justified. Therefore, being justified by faith, not by our works, being justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. In verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 11. In verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement. We come to point number three. Point number three, release from the curse for the lawless. We are released from the curse for the lawless. We're looking at Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us. Christ has already redeemed us. It is not that it's going to happen in the future. It has happened already. By his atonement on the cross, by his sacrifice on the cross, what message, what revelation that Christ already has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We didn't have people telling us at the point of salvation, we're already redeemed from the curse of the law and from the curse of man, from the curse on earth, and from the curse throughout eternity. 
That's why some believers in quotes, they are still afraid of a particular curse. They're still running here and there. They want to be free from the curse. But if you knew the truth, if you accepted the truth, if you lived by the truth, you will know that Christ has already redeemed us, us believers, us the justified, us the children of God, us who have their names written in the book of life. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cause it is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the substitute who bore all our curse. Number two, the salvation that banished the old curse. Number three, the stage of being blessed without any other curse. Number one. Number one, the substitute, that's Christ, who bore all our curse. Already we've read that in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. He, Christ, Savior, final sacrifice, the substitute, he bore all our curse. Isaiah chapter 53, reading from verse 4, surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. The streak, the strike, the smiting, the affliction that will have been upon us, Christ has carried that. Verse 5, surely, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with the stripes, and with the stripes, personal, and with the stripes, we're healed. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him. And the Lord has laid on him. And the Father has laid on Christ the iniquity of us all. The punishment, the penalty, the condemnation, the curse, the suffering, the affliction of us all. Everything laid on him. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 for he has made him to be seen for us that is to be the sin offering for us he took our place he knew no sin that we might be made we might be recreated and refashioned and remodeled the righteousness of God in him. Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Who gave himself for us. That's a substitute. That's the final sacrifice. He gave himself for us. For you, for me, for us. For the Jew, for the Gentile, for us. For the white, for the black, for the brown, for the yellow, for us. For the man, for the woman, for us. 
for the sinner, for the ungodly, for the unrighteous, everyone. He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Look at number two. Number two, the salvation that banished the old curse. Now we're saved. And that salvation removed not only our sin, but the consequence of our sin. The curse, the condemnation, the judgment, and the damnation. The salvation that banished the old curse. Romans chapter 8, chapter 10, verse 8. But what says it? The word is nice thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That, that is the word of faith, not the word of condemnation. The word of faith, not the word of judgment. The word of faith which we preach was that, verse 9. In verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why? Verse 10. It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You take the word of his promise to heart. You believe it in your heart that he has paid the penalty for all the sins you ever committed in your life. You believe that in your heart and it will bring righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it tells us in Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, here it tells us, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, that come unto God not by Moses. Come unto God, not through the way of the law of Moses, that come unto God by him, Christ, the Savior, who has taken all our sin and all our curse away. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Verse 26, for such an high priest became us, befitted us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Look at number three here. Number three, the stage of being blessed without any other curse. No curse upon the believer anymore. I'm a believer. I am a believer. I believe in Christ. I believe in Christ. He is my Savior. He is my substitute. He is the final sacrifice. He is my shepherd. No cause on my life anymore. How about you? Let heavens hear. Let heavens